to the bridge to bring water from well three and four back to that tank in order to circumvent the pressure system that would keep the water out. Um, that's kind of outside the scope of what we're talking about right now. What we're talking about right now is to whether or not the board is willing to release an RFP to develop or to receive a proposal to develop a plan for a booster station at River Road and Power. Not including the tank, just the booster station. Have you done it? Mr. Davis? Well, yeah, no, I just got okay. You're gonna put a booster pump in without building the big tank, okay. Where's the booster gonna pull water from to pump to the terrace? So initially it would pull water from the east or from the west side of the river, our main zone, and pump it to the east side. Yeah. Well, what are you going to use that 50,000 gallon tank for it? So it would be removed. Yeah. Uh, I'll take Go it. ahead. I don't know if the director has any more comments on this. No, I think he's done. Um, one thing I kind of wanted to jump in about and just make sure it gets dealt with is the communication between either us or the project or the, the construction company and the, and the residents that are on the terrace. One of the issues when that may happen, and my concern is that when we boost that pressure, some people may have older fixtures which may blow. Yeah. You know, and I think it's and, I, and so kind of I want to make sure that that coordination and that I don't know if we need to put it to the RFP. Sorry, then it's just we get we get out there that we want this to happen, and not like it, oops, this kind of got forgotten, and you know now someone's <clears throat> you know old sad water you know source line from 1940 is now blown because it was already failing to begin with that's kind of like my biggest concern this project. right i think it's still okay, like sure. so what are we going to do about that so so the rfp isn't there to address that no the rfp is to address the design mm -hmm. part of the design could be a uh, you know condition in the construction documents that you know Pressure regulators have to be installed on all, all the houses when the when the the booster station is installed. Mm -hmm. um, that is more of a a term of construction, okay. not necessarily a term of design. Mm -hmm. The design would be primarily the design for the booster station, how you know how much pressure it needs to make, how much flow it needs to make, what its configuration is and put together the plans that could then be used for construction. Mm -hmm. um, but your concern is very valid. We have a lot of customers over there that have lines that are you know, 50 years old or more that are just rotted away and are leaking on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So we obviously don't want to make the problem worse, but um, we do have to, at some point, increase pressure and increase flow mm -hmm. to protect the homes that are there. Absolutely. And so I just want to make sure that we can protect the homes, because that's very important, and that also that we don't accidentally lose service lines on the, yeah. on the back right. side. That's, that's just, that was just my concern. The discussion on the table is about just mm -hmm. getting an RFP yeah. for Absolutely. a bid for the pump. Mm -hmm. uh, public comment? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, just just, just one second, I'm sorry. Um, remind me again, I know you said it, but where did you say that the new tank was going? So, the, based on the alternatives analysis that the board approved several months ago, it would be on the bluff adjacent to where the power station is. Yeah, that's what we purchased. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yes, got it. Okay, that's it. Oh, comment? Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean any disrespect by this question, but are any of you familiar with the San Lawrence water? The San Lawrence Terrace Water Company? Yeah. Huh? Are you? Mm-hmm. When were they around? That was the 90s, if I'm mistaken. Aren't you guys still think of what, oh, so sorry, we can't have a discussion, but the answer is. Yeah. Okay, long before the 90s. The reason why the CSE was formed was to put control in, in the community rather than the county making decisions <coughs> for us. Those pipes up on the terrace, have been there since the 1940s. If you increase the water pressure up there, you're gonna create a whole host of new problems for the district. Not to mention the fact that many of the homes, not many, they're building new homes out there now, but there's a lot of homes out there that were moved from Camp Roberts. I live in one. 
If you boosted my pressure to 65 pounds, it would blow my water line right out of my front lawn. I'm telling you right now, I know it for a fact. It's, it's scheduled 200 PVC is what I've repaired in the past. Um, the point is, is a lot of houses, the, the plumbing in the house is that old. So they would have to put a pressure regulator that I'm assuming the CSD is going to buy and install for them because they're not making this decision, you guys are. So I would strongly recommend that you talk to the people who live up there. I know them. When I first moved here, I came down and complained. I cow was the water back from the county. I'd say, what, what's going on with the water pressure? And it's oh, all this all together. I asked Mike Ellison when he was the general manager. He said, the law says we only have to deliver five pounds and we've provided water. That was his answer to me. Five pounds. Doesn't seem realistic. You can't operate sprinklers on five pounds. You can't do anything with five pounds. Right now, my shower works great. Please don't destroy that. Any other public comment? Okay, motion. Um, no question. I'll second. I'll allow the fire chief to go out. I have a motion on the floor by Director Gregory to for request for proposal to the Harris Booster Pump Station design. Oh, by consensus? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Second by Director Schlein? Yes. Director Cowboys? Yes. Director Gregory? Yes. Director Davis? Yes. Director Spine? Yes. Four zero one accent passes. Can I make a comment? Just not to make this meeting cut taking longer, but um, so just for clarification, the state law currently says that we have to provide a minimum of twenty pounds, which we're barely meet barely meeting in most cases. Um, but new you know, substantial new developments are required to have a minimum of 40 pounds, which would be difficult for us to, to manage. Um, but in regard to individual homes, uh, Mr. Green is correct. We would be providing some sort of a, a pressure regulator to prevent overpressure of the homes that you know, can't handle it. You would? We would have to. Right. Otherwise, we would have multiple homeowners down here, and uh, they yeah. wouldn't have they wouldn't have one piece of paper, they'd have a whole bunch of paper yeah. from all the bills. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So that'll be something to consider as it goes forward. Just conclude that. All right, uh, let's move on to um, item 11, update on the San Miguel Fire Department temporary housing unit. So, yeah. so you're going to give the update for the fire chief? Yes. All right. Don't hurt me. Oh. <laughs> So uh, the only update that I'm aware of from the last meeting is that uh, uh, Mr. Keller was contacted. Mr. Keller is amenable to having uh, or to extending the, the lease agreement for 10 years, uh, starting at the end of the current lease agreement. Uh, there is an increase to the cost. And let me find that real quick. So let me put it in here. Uh, It's on page 443. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. 443? Yeah. Way down there. Yeah. Um, so that's the current agreement. Oh. Um, well, at any rate, the current agreement is $5,760 per year. Um, based on discussions with Scott, I believe that the new agreement um, was the same terms except for the cost, which was um, 8000 and something per year. Um, sorry, I didn't, didn't write that down beforehand. So. Um, so on the short end, uh, Mr. Keller is willing to sign a new agreement. Um, my understanding is that once the board agrees to fund the project, then 
we can get an agreement signed and uh, recorded for the next 10 years. And it would be a, a fixed rate, whereas currently there was a step increase in our current agreement. Yeah, I met with the fire chief and he just had a meeting with him, I believe, at that time and said that the, he had agreed to all those terms. Yeah. Um, so there was no problem in getting an extension. Yeah. So it, it's ready to go. The agreement's written. It's ready to go once or if the board elects to approve funding for the remainder of the installation costs. <coughs> okay. Thank you. And Director Calvins? No comments at this moment, Mr. President. Gregory. No comment. Director Davis. Uh, I uh, I had an understanding that uh, uh, supposedly they were going to try to sit. after two years they were going to sell the one that they put in there for some reason. So why why would you need a uh, 10 year contract. So, based on your comments about wanting to make sure that it was secure, right, right. they negotiated a longer term contract yeah. with the understanding that if they no longer needed it, that they could see that they could terminate the contract. Okay, that's my question. So, it's a, it's a 10 year contract, but it could be terminated. So, it could be terminated early if the, if the fire department completes what they want to complete with the renovation and or right. the building, okay. then they can right. terminate it early. Yeah. But given the, the amount of time it's taken to get this far, he yeah. wanted, and your comments, he wanted to make sure that okay. there was enough time without having to renegotiate something, right. assuming something might happen to Mr. Cowan. But it's not in the least that Keller can terminate it at any time, no. is it? Yeah. Okay. Make sure they know about that. Uh, I think that the, that the original date uh, of the termination of the of the current contract was was set in the last meeting a year earlier than it actually was. I think it's still 2026. The current contract ends in 2026. Okay, so we actually have a problem point. Yeah, so that was kind of erroneous the last meeting, but when I met with Scott, he pointed that out and he said he was, that he'd already secured an extension. So yeah, kind of like, I, I believe I believe at previous meetings it, may, it was misrepresented to be. Uh, through April of 2025, which is much, much more urgent than 2026. However, based on board direction, we did secure a contract or a, a lease agreement for the longer period. Okay. Um, any other board comment? Public comment? Yeah. Um, the county planning department is calling this a temporary project, which can go up to five years, not beyond. You're putting a mobile home downtown in San Miguel. They don't want it there for 10 years. I've already spoken to them, I've contacted them, and they said it's temporary. That's how he got the sidewalks waived. It's because it's temporary. They're not gonna buy 10 years. They said five years at the max, okay? The other thing I have, what we would like to know is, is, is there a comprehensive plan with a timeline and cost estimates, a document that the public can view for this whole project? Something that's on paper? Or is this only just shooting from the hip? I'm just curious. And I think that's the next item. Well, the next item is borrowing money. Yeah, about that Which I have, will have something to say about that too, but. Uh, Pages 408 through 455 of the packet. Yeah, I'll have to do that when I get home because I don't know. 408 to 455 yeah. is the entire plan with a timeline, and it goes, the timeline goes 10 years? No. Okay. It's the timeline. So it's the cost. Yeah. And it's just the cost incurred to get here. Yeah, no, what I want to know is is there an entire plan start to finish on paper that says we're, we're starting with nothing? And we're going to do this, and we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and we're going to do this. And this is going to cost this much and take this long, so on and so forth. I mean, that's how you. We had that meeting about three years ago. Yeah, yeah. Then you still have the document. Thank you. Yeah. How can the public obtain a copy? Well, so I'm sure it now needs to be updated. 
So the, e the best okay. thing to do would be to talk to the fire so chief. Any yeah, 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 yeah. Well, is sure. the fire chief work for you or, or he works for the board? He works for the board, separate. Uh -huh. separate. Oh, okay. Good to know. Um, what is the fire department's annual income from our tax base? So this isn't really relevant. This well, you're not, not going to answer, 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 answer that question in this. In this <laughs> This is not a question to answer. It's just a report or comment on what we just went through, okay? And it, not to ask for specific costs. You can get that going to the district or go down to the fire department and talk to the chief. Okay. okay. Sure. I, I was told Thank you to come down here and ask questions and get answers. That's, you know, Lori, that's what Lori tells everybody. I didn't know that we had a question and answer period. Yeah. The no, Lori said come down and ask questions right. and get answers. All right. So this item is for no action, it's just an update. Yeah, just an update, yeah. Thank you. There, okay, 12, 10 year inner fund loan between the street lighting fund and the fire fund in the amount of $80,000 by resolution 2024-44, approved by three fifths vote. So this item was discussed at the September 26th board meeting. Um, this item was requested by Director Davis and Director Baker to come back in December 19th. And also direct, or requested by Director Smiley and Director Gregory to come back at October 24th, which comes before December, December 19th. Um, no additional information was requested. It was just requested to come back. So again, this, um, this item is to request a uh, maximum amount of $80,000 as an interfund loan from the street lighting and landscaping department to complete the temporary housing unit project. Uh, the terms would be for a maximum of 10 years repayment at the current interest rate that the money would be earning at our bank. Um, at the time of this report, that was 4.579%. Uh, uh, interest rate would be adjusted each year in July. Um, there would be no payment or no penalty for early payoff. And upon sale of the temporary housing unit, the loan would be paid off before everything is. Um, as part of this request, the there would be uh, budget adjustments in the amount of eight, up to eight thousand dollars for temporary housing unit. Um, $80,000 for a transfer, $80,000 for an interfund loan, and uh, any, the final amounts to be transferred would be those of the actual costs up to $80,000. So if it turns out it was $60,000, then it would be a $60,000 loan, and all the, the rates and the payments would be adjusted based on the interest for a 10 year period. That's it. Unless you guys would like some more information. Well, Director Calvin? I'm, I'm going to defer to defer to my colleagues so for comments. Dr. Okay. Gregory? Um, I, don't, I don't see a problem with this since it's a loan and um, our department will make it right again. So it is too important not to see this all the way through to the end. So. Yeah, if we don't proceed with this, then it kind of kills what we've been doing with that whole property down here this whole time. So, Director Davis, your comment. I personally, you know, there's been enough money spent down there, and the, the fire department still has money in their own general fund. Let them, let them use their money. Don't take it from uh, our street lights here, and so on. And it's just, it ain't right. I mean, they, they, they spent probably half a million dollars on a double wide trailer down there that still isn't there. And, you know, it's probably gonna end up being probably at least another 100,000, time to get all the dirt work and get it hooked up and everything. I mean, that's, it's, it's not, uh, let them figure it out. You know? Well, we're trying to figure it out right now. That's why we're here. Well, yeah, okay. Well, 
don't don't take it from from our light lighting uh, fund. So the the issue with just taking eighty thousand dollars from the amount of money that a fire has, either in investments or in reserves, is that you're taking basically their cushion away. So if anything bad happens, if the fire truck gets total or you know anything really happens and it costs them a significant amount of money, then they will be burning through everything that they have in reserve because they spent it all on this. The lighting department has enough money that they can loan fire the money at the same rate that they would be earning in investment or at the bank. So there's no loss to lighting. They're still getting their money back. They're still getting, making the interest. Now we aren't getting any street lights put in. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a different thing. I'm well, happy to is that well, well, no, but what, that's, that's what I'm saying. So, so, so the loaning this money from street lighting to fire is not going to interfere with putting street lights in. This is just going to help fund the temporary housing unit to get it completed so that it can be put into use and be finally using the building for what we or what they intended it for in having staffing and having a sheriff's representative more available in town. So to be clear too, that the, from what I understand, bids have already been, uh, um, he's already received bids for all this work. That's why he knows he's 80,000 over. So he's not willy nilly. He has it all lined out. And if it wasn't for the county, um, screwing around with this whole procedure, we would have been underbid. But unfortunately, the county uh, wanted to um, make, uh, make it much, much harder than what it needed to be. So that's where we're at. And so um, the need for that presence of a sheriff to be in town will be so valuable not to mention for our firefighters um, so that you can do what you need to do and um, and then hopefully this will get behind uh, Scott so now you guys will be able to work on permanent um, um, you know structures and everything and I'm very excited for that as well so um, <coughs> All I have to say. Yeah, thank you uh, for the attendance from the fire department tonight. You guys are really nice yes. to be here. I'm thank sorry you. it's going so long, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's needed. Uh, we need to get it done, get it over with. Um, the sheriff is over the moon about having his own little place in there and can write a report, get away from the you know outside, worry about somebody behind him. But anyway, again, thank you very much from the board for being here tonight. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, any other comment on the board? Not at this time. I understand the public was excited to speak. Yeah. Um, public comment, please. Yeah, it's not going to do any good, but Anthony, explain to them what happened the last time one department borrowed money from the other. Okay. Good night, folks. I don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I can explain it to you. Yeah, okay. what's so you need? I, mean, I, can explain it. I don't know that I need to hear that explanation. <laughs> uh, it's not necessarily material, but it is, it is good to point out. So if there's no other public comment, I'd be happy to give you the cliff down version. Is there any other public? Did you like to step up and say something? I just wanted to say that I'm, um, I like this because our response time, I know that if the light was on, it would be great, but I'd rather them get there sooner and have staff to help us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you thank very you. much. Appreciate it. Brian? Uh, just a quick comment. Um, obviously, you guys already touched on a lot of it. Uh, sorry, Rubber Ross, uh, 700 North River Road. Uh, I've lived here for almost three and a half years now. I've been working with the department for about four years. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how long it's been since I've seen uh, this much change uh, in general. I mean, we were founded in 1888, uh, and it seems like it hasn't gone anywhere for a very long time. 
and we are very, very behind the curve. And for a lot of the neighboring agencies around us, their response times are on top of it. Mm -hmm. We are responding from our homes. All of us live in the community. Um, that is our job. I love doing it. Do it every day. Try to get as much coverage in as I possibly can. So I care about the community. I need to sustain, you know, live life. Uh, so getting this facility put in would, you know, obviously put a lot towards all of our staffing, uh, but as well towards what we hope to help out most is the community. Uh, there's always going to be an incident. Nobody ever knows when it's going to happen, and we always want to be there to help out. Well, thank you for all of you guys. Thank Great, you. Anyway, so, uh, all right, we've got public comment for the board, which pleasure. Uh, can I say something as for president? Sure. Uh, a couple things. First off, I do want to thank our firefighters for your dedication to our community, you know, going out there, being on the front lines, saving people's lives. The fact you guys stepped up into a position and, do, and doing that, I greatly admire. Uh, I also admire you guys for being here tonight, uh, you know, sitting through this very long meeting. Yeah. Uh, and I understand also the point that was made about the fact that, you know, there hasn't been a lot of change in our fire department. You know, there's a lot of questions about that. Um, and I know I have been an elected official since, oh gosh, December 2012. And the person who spoke a lot of things has been an elected official since 1999. You know, if you're looking, like, you want to ask why things haven't changed, well, look at who was an elected official when all of us were literally in kindergarten. You know, and I am just a little bit frustrated. I'm going to try to down out of professionalism, but the fact is, I was at that conference in San Diego, representing another agency, and I drove back today from Southern California to be here because of this. We have talked about this for a very long time. This first came up in like 2016, you know, having a sheriff's beat station. Now we finally get to have it. And then I went to the minutes, and I was like, oh gosh, here we go. So, you know. <laughs> Any day I drive to come here, to go sit through all this stuff, I'm done with it. It's over. The count's moving forward. Our firefighters need the resources. And I'm more than happy and proud, and also exhausted, to make a motion to approve this item. And I also want to say that I have repeatedly asked for projects from the street lighting and landscape department, but I'm making a motion to approve it because this is, it's over. I'm done with it. Make it happen. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tired second, but it's a second. I have a motion on the floor to approve resolution 2024-44 by Director Calvin, second by Director Gregory. Let's have a vote. Director Davis? No. Director Calvin? Yes. Director Gregory? Yes. Director Smiley? Yes. Passes three, one, and one absent. Okay, moving on to item 13. Authorization to open investment accounts. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Be safe out there. Authorization to open investment accounts with uh, Cal Trust by resolution 2024-53. Prefix vote. So this item is just authorization to invest money at Cal Trust. Cal Trust is a joint powers authority created by public agencies, essentially four public agencies. Um, it has similar return rates as our bank does. However, our bank rate changes on a monthly basis. This rate would change on, depending on the investment, on a, a longer term. Um, and depending on the investment, we can put the money in for you know, next day return, you know, year out type investment or further out. Uh, the benefit to Caltrox is that we just don't we don't have the the strings that are attached to investing in bonds or um, other funds where you have to basically sell them. Uh, Caltrox is essentially another bank type investment where we call them, say, hey, we need the money tomorrow. They'll send us the money back tomorrow. So it works very similar to our bank. 
Um, investing with CalTrust is just spreading the money out a little bit more. So if there's a problem with the bank, not all the money is there. If there's a problem in, uh, with our investments, not all our money is there. And it gives us three reliable sources for a high revenue return on our uh, reserves. So again, this is just an authorization to open the account. Um, CalTrust is very, very easy to work with. They can have, you can have all your money there, you can have none of your money there, and you can still have an account there. So, um, again, it's just a authorization, uh, or approval of resolution 2024-53, authorizing the general manager to open investment accounts with CalTrust. Um, board, uh, Anthony, anything? Renette? Mm -mm. David, tell you, what, what type of interest are we looking at? So as of 9-30-2024, uh, depending on which investment track you were funding, the investment was either 4.14 or up to 5.25. Uh, I mean, sorry, 5.24. Really? So our current, the current, or last month's rate <coughs> at the bank was 4.579. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty comparable in putting it in a longer term uh, deposit at yeah, CalTrust will yield essentially the same result with less fluctuation in interest. But the money will be available <coughs> if something comes It'll up. It'll be available yeah. either next day or in the like like CD being you know. on. Yeah, not like a CD where you have to sell it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, I would say public comment, but I think the chairs are empty. Please so don't ask. <laughs> and she just might want to. Okay. Uh, board's pleasure on this. Motion to approve. I'll second. I have a motion on the floor by Director Calvin to approve resolution 2024-453. Second by Director Gregory. I'll have a vote. Director Davis? Yes. Director Calvin? Yes. Director Gregory? Yes. Director Smiley? Yes. Four zero one. Okay. Sorry, I was reading. No, hey. <laughs> not at all. I know. <laughs> I was reading uh, Number 11, uh, item 11. Uh, board comment this section is intended as an opportunity for the board members to make brief announcements, request information from staff, request future addenda items, and a report to their own act on their own activities related to the district business. No action is to be taken until the item is placed on a future agenda. So I have a request. Is there a something that we could still? You mentioned that there is a chance for us to use. If we're not doing the uh, the pipeline to nowhere. That maybe we can use it the grant for a recycled project for somewhere else. Can we look into that? Can Staff come back to that? To I don't part? remember saying that, but. Yeah, um, well, you, you did. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sort of did. You said so. if you wanted that, then you need to ask for it. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean that we could use the grant for that. If you wanted a different project, we'd have to ask 